this is problem 10.12, and we like to find the area moment of inertia of this figure respect to x axis. So we have to decompose the figure, where I'm going to decompose the figure in three different figures. So this one first, there is several ways to solve this problem. So you can actually choose a smaller rectangle and a triangle. I'm going to choose big rectangle, which I will call one. Then I will call this triangle over here two. And then I will call this circular whole three. So my figure will be composed by a big rectangle, which the dimensions will be 350 millimeters and 300 millimeters high minus a triangle shape which is 150 and 300 minus a circle which is of radius 7. So that's how I will set up my problem. So my area moment of inertia will be the figure 1 minus the moment of inertia of the figure 2 minus the moment of inertia of the figure 3. So I have to calculate the moment of inertia of each of those figures, and since I chose to use a bigger rectangle, I have to subtract the other two areas. As I said, you could have chosen to do a smaller rectangle and add this triangle and I have to give you exact the same result. Of course, you always have to subtract this hole right here because my area is this one right here. Okay, so let's start by calculating the area moment of inertia of the first figure. And to do that, I will have to use the parallel axis theorem. And as you recall, the parallel axis theorem is that the inertia respect to any point will be the inertia respect to the center of gravity of the figure plus the distance between those two axes squared times the area. So my area moment of inertia of this rectangular will be 112 since I am calculating respect to x-axis, so it will be this x-axis, and this is my center of gravity of that figure. If the base is equal to 350, and since I am calculating respect to x, the one that is cubed is the one perpendicular to the x-axis, so it will be the height, which is this one right here and I will add the area times the distance. The distance between that center of gravity and my axis x, right? My axis x is over here, will be 150. So I will have 150 squared times the area, which is 350 times 300. And I have this calculation right here, 3.1. 15 times 10 to the 9th millimeters to the 44th. This is the first one. The second one is the area moment of inertia of this triangular shape. And as you recall, the triangle is over 36, the base which is 150, and the height which is 300, and the one that is cubed is 300. That is calculated respect to the center of gravity. And as you recall, the center of gravity of that triangle is two-thirds of the skinny side or one-third of the heavy side. So this distance over here is 200. Okay, so we apply the parallel axis theorem, so that distance is 200. And then my area is 150 times 300 divided by 2. And that is 1.10113 times 10 to the 9th millimeters to the fourth. And the third one is the circular shape. The measure is pi r. In this case, the r is 75 to the fourth divided by 4. 
and here we have to use the parallel axis theorem again, and that will give me the distance is 150 square, and the area is pi r square. And that gives me the value of 4.224 times 10 to the 8 millimeters to the 4th. Okay, so having those three values, as I said, I'm going to subtract those two values to the first one to get the area moment of inertia of my shaded figure. So that will be then 3.115 times to the ninth. Even though I, I did not write uh, the fourth decimals, please, when you calculate it, save those values in your calculator so you get a precise number when you are subtracting all these values. And the value that I get is equals to 1.715 tenth to the ninth millimeters to the fourth. Since this is valid for all the x-axis, of course, I use the value of O, which is the uh, origin of the of my coordinate system, but it's important to understand that this is valid for all the x-axis. And now we have to calculate the radius of gyration. For that, we need the area. The area of that figure would be the area of the first figure minus the area of the second figure minus the area of the third figure. And we already know the area of each of those figures. So that would be the first figure would be 350 times 300 minus the second figure, which is 150 times 300 divided by 2 minus the third one, which is pi for 75 squared. And the area gives me a value of 64,828.5 millimeters squared. And the definition of radius of gyration, kx, is square root of this value over the area. So if we divide this value over this value and take the square root, we get value 162.65 millimeters. That means that we can locate similar figure with all the area concentrated at 162, and it will give you the same result.